The Russia-Ukraine crisis is causing uncertainty in natural gas markets. As Western countries weigh potential sanctions against Moscow, the future of Nord Stream 2, the Russian-built pipeline in the Baltic Sea, has been brought into question. When it comes to Nord Stream 2, the pipeline that would bring natural gas from Russia to Germany, if Russia further invades Ukraine, it will not happen. But in Europe, the picture is more complicated. That's because about 40% of the continent's gas imports, used to generate power for heating, cooling, and for some industrial processes, come from Russia. Europe absolutely has huge interdependence um, with Russia on gas, and, and it really is an interdependence. The pipeline is awaiting approval to operate from German and EU regulators. If granted, it will double the capacity of an existing pipeline in the region. People are saying, you've got the Nord Stream 1 link, why do you need a Nord Stream 2, a second link in the eyes of critics will increase the dependence of Germany and Europe on uh, Russian energy exports. Concerns that supplies to Europe will be affected by the tensions come as European and Asian prices for the commodity soared amid winter supply shortages. So how does the rising demand and tensions in the region have rippling effects on the global market, including on U.S. efforts to plug the supply gap? Officials in the Biden, Trump, and Obama administrations have opposed Nord Stream 2 over fears that it would enhance Moscow's political sway in Europe. We don't want Europe's energy supplies to be dependent on Vladimir Putin. Now, fresh threats from the U.S. to halt the 765-mile-long underwater system are underway as Russia amasses troops and weapons on Ukraine's border. And as geopolitical tensions are increasing around Ukraine, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine already once in 2014, annexed part of its territory, the Crimean Peninsula. Sanctions were placed on Moscow from Western countries, including Germany, following that military action. But the financial penalties didn't include gas. Now the United States are saying that this time around we should, we should push for broader sanctions if, if Russia attacks Ukraine again, and we should include energy. So essentially the pipeline is in the middle of all this. Russia has been pushing for the pipeline to be approved, as gas in Europe has been in short supply. That's partly because Gazprom, Moscow's state-run supplier, refilled domestic inventories and allowed its sizable storage in Europe to run unusually low. President Vladimir Putin said quick approval of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline would help rebalance the European market. Those comments exacerbated hawkish fears that Moscow might be weaponizing energy. The limited supply of Russian gas in Europe has added to the global demand for gas, and specifically gas, um, liquefied natural gas that can be shipped um, from other places. So the liquefying natural gas facilities in the U.S. just going at full tilt to try and meet as much of that demand as they could. U.S. gas prices have risen because more gas is being exported. But the total production of all existing facilities can only export a maximum of around 12 percent. The rest is sold at home, keeping U.S. prices mostly insulated from international ones. Any U.S. sanctions targeting natural gas in Russia could come at a cost for Europe, which may struggle to find quick alternatives of the supply. However, those penalties are unlikely to be put in place by President Biden. It's more likely is that they will reach some sort of compromise. And the Germans are saying, look, if there is a Russian aggression in Ukraine, if, if the Russians march in again into their um, neighboring country, then we will stop the pipeline. 